This presentation is in honor of Professor Cooney and is concerned with creativity and technology and the arts in the context of virtual worlds. There's a challenge implicit in this title as to whether there is some kind of step change in creativity in the current environment. You'll see from my affiliations that have connections with a number of academic institutions, some of which are more on the science and technology context and others more on the creative arts. And these have helped me in seeking to understand the relationship between technology and the arts and how creativity may be uh, considered and advanced in these various environments. So this presentation is in honor and the memory of Professor Cooney. He pioneered virtual worlds, he termed them cyber worlds, and he organized the first international workshop on synthetic worlds at the University of Aizu in 1993. And there was a further conference at Hosei University in 2002. And he was the founder of the International Conference on Cyber Worlds, which starts, started in 2003 and continues today. Therefore, there was early recognition on his part of the importance and significance of this area. And we are indebted to him for his ideas and his vision and translating that into activities that helped others to understand what was happening. He visited Leeds in 1995 uh, to give a presentation at Computer Graphics International 95, the picture of him here. Also, Professor Patrick Larkis of MIT, and Professor Shin of CAST. First of all, then an overview of this presentation, a definition, secondly, online collaboration, advantages of network collaboration, the tradition of the disciplinary boundary and the challenge of integration, relationship to virtual worlds, and then the relationship between technology design and the arts. And then finally, seek to answer the question, so what's new? Is there a, a new renaissance associated with this area? First of all, then a definition. As you will know well, the Renaissance was a fervent period of European cultural, artistic, political and economic rebirth following the Middle Ages, generally described as taking place from the 14th century to the 17th and promoted the rediscovery of classical philosophy, literature and art. And in a sense, was a precursor to the developments in the scientific revolution also. So thinking of online collaboration, we know that modern technology in the form of the internet and the World Wide Web has certainly broken down traditional barriers and research collaborators who formerly were at a distance can now share ideas and experiments uh, across the World Wide Web and virtual working essentially it collapses time and space in the sharing of ideas, experiment, simulation, and results. So in theory, at least, research and collaboration know no boundaries, but that could be a bit of an overstatement, as we know that there are very strong cultural and disciplinary uh, boundaries that would essentially work against collaboration or certainly interdisciplinary collaboration. So let's set out firstly the advantages, as I see it, of network collaboration. Well, it can act as an accelerator for ideas because we're collaborating in real time normally. It speeds up any implementation which follows from those ideas, enables us to do a quick evaluation of the implementation, and that can generate new ideas if, if there are problems. We can test new ideas it can be more efficient and effective and it can lower cost. But there is a very strong tradition of the disciplinary boundary, stronger in some places than others, of course. The boundary defines the existing discipline. And in a sense, what's inside the boundary establishes the culture and the procedures and practices that define that discipline. 
And in some disciplines, uh, this has been going on for centuries. So it's not going to be overturned or changed in a moment of time. The grant proposals that are produced within a discipline are generally evaluated by a peer review process within that discipline. And academia and research labs are often structured around this concept of disciplines and faculties with uh, deans and heads of departments and so on. And the way in which the institution carves up the budget could result in particular budgets going to various areas and the various faculties put in proposals and get a budget allocation. So no dean wants to see leakage of their budget across the boundary. And this, in a sense, the budget silo can result in a, in a strengthened distance. So there is challenge and potential associated with this boundary. But most leaders of institutions recognize that new subjects, uh, new disciplines often develop at the boundary between existing disciplines. And we know that real world problems often require multidisciplinary teams to solve them. You could think of, uh, of Google and, and Facebook and Microsoft, uh, relatively flat organizations and bringing teams of the required expertise together when there's a new project or a problem to be solved. And it's the working together of those teams that is often fairly successful. And without the teams, uh, the problems wouldn't be solved. And also creative industries require multidisciplinary teams to create products and services to meet current infusion needs because there's quite a spectrum required from technology to usability, content, and so on. So many new products and services in our world are underpinned by technology. And this requires the integration of aspects of other disciplines to make them usable and acceptable. This is a, an attempt at a visual representation of the problem solving landscape and how single disciplinary approaches can result in a lack of progress reaching a stone wall effectively. But something that is more open and multidisciplinary can lead to a more optimum solution. So the challenge of integration therefore, uh, the important point on this slide I think is that generally most teams operate within a framework of an organization or an institution. And the individual teams may be um, very energetic and have lots of ideas, but they need to be supported within the wider framework of the organization. So the senior management within the, within the institution need to be in tune with providing a supportive framework for these exciting ideas and developments to take place. So the cultural embedding of these components in the organization is necessary. It's not just sufficient to have a virtuous circle because the virtual circle can't control the organization. It's a part of it. It needs the support of the management. Virtual environments enable us to integrate and enhance creative teams by bringing them together over distance. And often we've got a greater diversity of cultures and social context. And this in turn can enhance creativity. There are of course issues to do with latency for critical real-time applications that are a continuing problem. There are a number of European Union projects in the area of telepresence and shared virtual environments. And they, over a period of years, pooled their key results in a in an environment called Chains. And I don't think these were ever published, but they were very interesting to see the combined results. So you had a set of people all engaged in different creative activities, various kinds of technology and various kinds of contact, content. Considering the relationship between technology and the arts, the key aspects I would submit are communication, interaction, installations for installation art, convergence and 
the facility being able to use virtual reality and augmented reality to extend the environment within which creativity can take place. Is it a new Renaissance therefore? Well, in the 14th century, it was a transition from a medieval era to modernity. And it did open up the possibilities of new horizons and new ways of thinking and working. And I would propose that similarly, Renaissance teams in the 21st century can offer the opportunity to utilize the expertise now available and share ideas and visions and work together towards a common objective. And that can overcome the tradition, traditional boundaries of the past. And we are, an we are in, an, in an environment of reducing costs and increasing bandwidth, increasing quality. That can result in a, indirectly in a closer relationship between the researchers and the disciplines. So the big question that I'm posing is, is it a new Renaissance now? So I think the points to consider are we are seeing increasing integration in disciplines in academia and in the work practices of industry. We note the increasing importance of interdisciplinarity in the formation of new disciplines across the boundaries. I think this is being increasingly accepted, perhaps reluctantly, in academic institutions, but we are in the context of industrial and academic drivers, so uh, drivers inside the institution in order to give it new life, so to speak, and move into new areas and what we see industry doing. But it is a disruptive environment in which we are working both internally and externally that might drive developments forward. But whether it's a new renaissance or not may not be clear until we can use hindsight. And it may not be a paradigm shift, I accept this, as described by Thomas Kuhn with regard to scientific revolutions. This is a short presentation, just summarizing the main points from a paper I submitted to the visual computer in the special issue in honor of Professor Cooney. And there's more detail and also more references in this uh, particular paper, which is online at this link here. <laughs>